In this video, I'm going to walk through setting up Linux on Windows using the Windows Store. So if I open up the Microsoft Store, you can see that if I search for Linux, I get Ubuntu, Kali, a bunch of different versions of Linux. And I'll go ahead and select Ubuntu, which I've installed on another computer already, so it says that I own it. And I'll click Install. Now it's installed, so I'll launch it. And the first time you run it, you'll see that I haven't enabled the Windows subsystem for Linux. So to do that, I'm gonna open up settings on my computer, click on apps, and also you wanna make sure that your Windows installation is up to date at this point. Sometimes some of these things can hang. And then in apps and features, select programs and features, which will be under related settings and click that. So you'll see there are some things that are installed and then you're going to select turn Windows features on or off, find the Windows subsystem for Linux, click OK. You'll need to wait for it to do some changes, and then it's going to want you to restart your computer. So I've restarted my computer, and now I could actually search for Ubuntu in Windows to find how to launch it, but I just went back to the Windows Store. If you enable the Windows subsystem for Linux before you do this, then you should be able to do this relatively smoothly and, and launch directly from here. So now you'll notice it's configuring. Now, this is a lot better than what we saw last time. So now it's going to ask me for a username. And usually you want to give something that's your name but without spaces. So I'll just do WHuber here, and I'll give it a password. It likes my password. And there we go. Let's suppose that on my file system, I've decided to store my source code folder on my C drive. I can make a new folder here and I'll call it CSC240. Now, if I CD to change the directory, MNT for mount, the name of the drive letter, and then the folder you chose. Now, if I do an LS, there's nothing there. And I'll touch a file, I'll just touch hello.c. Now if I do an ls to list the files, I'll see hello.c there. And if I go to my CSC240 folder, notice there's hello.c, which is empty. And I'll want to pick an, a file to use as default. And when I do that, it opens up the file and I can start editing. Now keep in mind, it doesn't matter what application you use to edit your files. It just needs to be something that can save in pure text format. And I'll print a quick hello world just to make sure this works. I've saved the file. So now if I do GCC hello world or hello.c, notice that's not installed. So there I'll need to install GCC. It'll want my password and I need to spell it right. It'll want to do some work there to say yes. So now GCC has finished installing. So I'll do the same command again. I'll GCC hello.c. And then I'll execute a dot out. And it says hello world. So I have C installed on this PC. And I'm able to edit that actually using Windows. So I could even use Notepad. So there it is. You can use any Windows editor you prefer. Again, just remember that whatever wherever your drive is, it's going to be slash MNT slash that drive letter slash and then whatever directory you want to go from there. So you can do this in any directory you want. There's also a home directory for your Ubuntu home drive. And usually that's going to be under your user profiles app data folder. One other note, I don't know if this has changed, but I know for a while Microsoft was recommending that you not update your Linux files using Windows tools. I personally have never run into a problem with that, but um, something just to keep in mind, if you want, you could use an editor like Vim or something like that in inside of Ubuntu. There's a lot of different editors you could use. Just something to keep in mind, since for the most part for this class, we'll be using just text files. So far, I haven't run into any trouble.
And certainly if you do, let me know so that we can let others know about that.